Hey, what's up guys? Tom from Positively Diagnostics. Uh, sorry it's been a while since I've uploaded any content. Uh, the reason for that, I've just been super busy in the shop. I haven't been able to film as much. Um, so I'm going to try this video. It's a little bit different format, but uh, it's going to be some content for you. So just give me some feedback on what you think of this video. And uh, maybe I can do some more like this. Just, you know, it, it gets busy and it gets hard to film. So just let me know what you think. All right, so in this video, uh, we are working on a 2008 Volkswagen Jetta. This is a two liter turbo engine. And the customer complaint is the check engine light is on, it's flashing, uh, the car runs like crap, and it is obviously a severe misfire with the flashing check engine light so lack of power um i think a little bit of vehicle history on this car um it came from another shop and they did i think everything they could to try to fix this misfire but the main repair that they performed uh, was a timing chain job. So they replaced timing chains on this engine. And they were still getting the same faults that they were before. So um, that was the customer concern. Check engine light, flashing check engine light. It misfires. It runs like crap. And they recently did a timing chain job. So... Let's keep that in mind so this is just a shot of the faults um, a big one that sticks out to me p0016 cam crank position correlation bank one and then p0300 301 303 304 302 all misfires um, p0506 idle control system rpm lower than expected so um, the big one that sticks out to me is this cam crank fault. Uh, this just came from another shop. They did a timing chain job. So that to me, my first thought is, well, maybe they put it together wrong. You know, maybe it's a tooth off. It's my first thought. So anytime I see these kind of faults, this P0016, uh, my, the first thing I want to do is I want to take a cam crank waveform. So that's where I started on this car. Um, oh, I forgot to mention one thing I did notice is uh, it at idle it would misfire, um, but it would run, it would smooth out a little bit when you raise the RPM. It would still miss, but it smoothed out a lot. So just something to keep in mind. So this is just a shot of... Uh, where we're hooking our scope up. This is on the cam sensor. This is right in the side of the valve cover. And we are on the signal wire. So this is going to be a shot of where we're hooking up on this crank sensor. So the, the crank sensor is buried on these. So I had to find a spot in the harness where I could just use my piercing tool just to get a waveform. So the cam sensor is a Hall effect. This one is an AC sine wave. And I just wanted to show you where I'm hooked up. So we have the Pico hooked up. And we're taking a cam crank waveform. Show you the waveform in this next shot. All right, so this is cam crank waveform the red trace is my cam sensor blue trace is my crank sensor and in this shot you can see those three big notches in the blue trace that's in our crank sensor so this is 720 of the crank and that is a full rotation of the cam So the crank will turn twice to get one full revolution of the cam. 
So this is what you want when you're doing this kind of analysis on these waveforms. You need 720 of the crank, which is going to be one full rotation of the cam. From, from what I've seen on these engines uh, from Volkswagen is that they have the, the same setup on a lot of their engines. And so when I look at these cam crank waveforms, it's usually the second big tooth, uh, the leading edge, will line up dead center or very close to center of the crank notch. So in the middle of this waveform, we have that crank sink in the crank waveform. And what I've seen is When you look at this cam waveform, the red trace, you have the small tooth, big tooth, big tooth, and that second big tooth, the leading edge, usually falls um, in the middle of that crank sink. So just by looking at this waveform already, I can tell it looks to me that the timing is off. And it looks like the cam has advanced a bit. So I believe this waveform was taken cranking so we'll go to the next shot so this waveform was taken with uh, the engine at idle and it's just zoomed in a little bit closer but looking at that leading edge of that second big tooth and where this crank sensor notch is that leading edge is way ahead from where it should be. So we, we need a known good, but from what I've seen, this to me is off. Just by looking at that waveform, just by looking and doing this kind of testing on these engines, I've always noticed that it's the second leading edge on the cam waveform that lines up with the notch in the crank sensor waveform. So this next image um, is just a degree measurement. And you see up in the right hand corner, I have that little red mark next to it. it looks like it's 81 degrees. And then the center, there's uh, the red line at the bottom. And that that line, that measurement right there is 81 degrees. So what I'm saying in this is that this cam sensor is 81 degrees advanced from where I think it should be or near where it should be. So right off the bat, just looking at this, we can say there is a timing problem. Did they put it together wrong? This just had a timing chain put on it. So Looking at this waveform, the cam is advanced 81 degrees. But I don't know how much advancement it has on this engine. But it doesn't matter because the cam stays right there all the time. Uh, that leading edge never changes so it's always 81 degrees advanced it never moves so looking at this waveform we have a timing issue the the cam is advanced 81 degrees and it never moves so what do we do do we sell a tear down is it put together wrong they put it together out of time so those are the questions that I have this just had the timing chain replaced what do we do so I'm thinking how does this cam advance what what is controlled and how does it do it so in the side of the cylinder head there is a solenoid it's called n205 it's the cam adjustment solenoid and when energized by the computer, there is a small valve that gets pushed open. 
and it changes flow of the oil inside the cam sprocket and it will advance the timing. And I've seen some of them where this control valve will stick and will keep the timing advanced. So that is something that I'm thinking about. I've also seen the actual solenoid itself get stuck out and keep the cam advanced or will just stick out. So before we start selling a teardown, I'm just going to do a quick inspection of this control valve just to make sure everything looks okay. So this is right in the top side of the cylinder head. And that is the solenoid and the control valve. It's held on by three bolts. There are three T30 Torx bolts. And looking at that control valve, it does not look normal to me. Um, if you look right in the center, there is that, that circle that's just sticking out. That should be flush. Anytime I've seen those, those are flush. That is the actual center of the control valve that moves, that is pushed uh, to change the flow of oil. So this is just an image of the solenoid. Uh, that piece in the middle, when it's energized, um, will push out and will engage and push in the center of the control valve. To change the flow of oil and this is just what it looks like when it's pushed out and it pushes on the center of that control valve so this is just another image of the control valve where that solenoid pushes in and so I've never seen one that how it's sticking out like that I've all they always look flush when you look at them so that to me, that's a red flag right there. Uh, this could be our problem. So I decide we need to remove this control valve. Um, it is reverse thread. And you have to hold the cam. Uh, otherwise, you could cause it to jump time. So um, there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, one way would be you pull this timing cover off and put a wrench on the cam just to hold it or you could pull the PCV breather out and expose the cam that way and hold it down there. Um, either way works. What I'm saying is you need to hold the cam before you try to loosen this and it's also reverse thread otherwise you could jump time. On the left is our control valve, the one that was installed in the car. And the one on the right is a new one, and you can see the center, the difference of the actual valve. Uh, the one on the right, which is our, a new one, it sits flush. That is how it's supposed to look. And the one on the left is the one that I just pulled out of this car. So these are side by side. You can see the difference in how far that one is sticking out. And I noticed when I would push in on it, it would move the entire control valve. So I was just thinking when, when the solenoid is bolted in, it's pushing this valve all the way in. So that's how it advances the cam. It pushes the valve in, it changes the flow of oil inside the cam gear. So I decide we're gonna replace it. We're gonna put this new valve back in. So this is just a shot. This is the new one installed in the car. And remember, this is reverse thread. So to tighten this one, you actually put your ratchet on loosen. And once again, you have to hold the cam. And I believe the torque spec was 35 Newton meters, something like that. But you have to, you have to hold the cam. Otherwise, you could cause it to jump jump a tooth on the chain. So we got the new one installed. 
Uh, the car is not misfiring anymore. It is running very smooth. And here is a shot of the cam crank waveform. And you can already see the difference. of where that cam lines up with the crank notch in the center. So this is typically what I see when I'm doing uh, cam crank waveforms. And so far, everyone I've come across, it's always been the second big tooth, the leading edge lines up near that crank sink. So I know it's not dead center like other ones I've seen, but the car's running smooth. We're not setting any faults now. So this car is fixed, that control valve stuck out, causing the timing to be advanced all the time. And this last shot is just a shot. Uh, I believe this is a snap throttle. You can see this is the cam advancement here. Just focus on that middle notch. And this is what it does when you snap the throttle it will advance the cam so this is just a, a shot of that but this car is fixed so a little bit different style video here um let me know what you guys think uh, I'd, I would like to do more live, but sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. Uh, so just to finish up with this video, uh, a faulty control valve in the camshaft was stuck out and causing the timing to be advanced all the time. So that's why it would smooth out when you raise the RPM because that's what it does when you raise the RPM. It will advance the cam timing. So control valves stuck out. I've never seen one stuck out like that. Uh, I've seen them stuck in. So I guess actually what was keeping this control valve pushed in was the solenoid when it was bolted in. Um, it was keeping that control valve pressed in all the time. So, so a new control valve fixed this car. Be careful when you're replacing it. Um, you can cause the chain to jump um, if you're not holding the cam. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know. Give me some feedback uh, on this style video. I might be able to do more of these if it's easier for me and if you guys like them. So just let me know what you think. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks for watching.